A few years ago, Yamaha made what I would consider to be a very bold move for the snowmobile industry. The idea was this, the dealers were piled up with new non-current models that were selling year after year at huge discounts just to get them off the showroom floor, but this created a bunch of problems. First, and I do believe of great importance to Yamaha, was that having non-current sleds sell at crazy discounts was having an effect on the value of new sleds people had bought when it was time to upgrade. Basically, why would I buy your used Viper when I can buy the exact same sled, one year old but still brand new, for only a fraction more? Yamaha has always prided themselves on how their sleds maintain their value. Something had to change to protect that. The second reason selling non-current sleds at huge discounts was problematic is something much more obvious and easier to understand. It hurts everyone's bottom line. Everyone has to make their cut when a sled sells new. So many customers gripe about how much the manufacturer makes or how much the dealer makes on a sale. I'm here to tell you it's not as much as you think and every time a discount is applied, that number drops, which means less money for Yamaha to spend on R&D and new products and less money for your dealer to reinvest into his business to provide you with the quality of service you expect. The final reason the oversaturation of non-current Yamaha models was a problem is that it's a perpetual problem. Each year they build more new models. Each year some of those new models wouldn't sell and would end up as non-currents. Each year some existing non-currents would sell as well, and some years the numbers averaged out and sometimes they didn't. But the non-current problem wasn't just Yamaha's, it was all the manufacturers. Yamaha was simply the first to get fed up enough to actually do something about it. So the solution they came up with, as stated earlier, was to cut back on new model production almost entirely. For one year they built almost no new sleds. Their focus was on clearing out the non-currents, getting the crates out of dealer storage buildings and getting the pipeline of sleds clean enough to bring in a full line of new sleds the next season without adding to the problem of non-current backlog. The plan worked, and it worked well. After taking a season off, the backlog of unsold Yamaha sleds was nearly cleaned out. Buyers weren't afraid to buy a new sled because they knew they wouldn't see that same sled for sale at a crazy discount 12 months later. Resale numbers came back, as did profitability for both Yamaha and their dealers. This was definitely a risky move, and it may not have worked for other manufacturers, but it did work for Yamaha. Since then, it seems like Yamaha has a renewed excitement for the snowmobile industry products are evolving and new models are showing up in the lineup each year. In fact, in 2021, Yamaha has one of the most complete lineups in the industry with models that cover every segment, all the way from the youth to the 180 horsepower hypersled segment and everything in between. Obviously, the SR120 is where a kid would start their journey in the snowmobile industry. The importance of these little sleds cannot be understated. It's sleds like the 120s that grab kids' attention and begin fostering that deep-seated passion for the sport that will stick with them for the rest of their lives. Any passionate snowmobiler knows exactly what I'm talking about, and many of us started on either youth sleds or, for us older guys, small vintage sleds when we were young. I've seen this happen right in front of my face with my own daughters. It wasn't a year after they were born that Grandpa Mark went out and procured two 120s, maybe a few years before it was needed. But when they were finally old enough to get on these little sleds and start riding, it's all they wanted to do all winter long. Proud dad moment and proud grandpa moment. I'll be honest, seeing them ripping around on real snowmobiles with those massive grins on their faces, well, that one hit me right in the feels. As time marched on as it seems to do, we were presented with another dilemma. What do you do when your kids outgrow the 120? That next step sled was conspicuous by its absence in the industry. Then along came Yamaha with the reintroduction of the iconic snow scoop. It was quite literally the perfect step up from a 120 and the second my oldest sat on our test unit, she was smitten by it. It was exactly what she needed and it kept that passion for riding snowmobiles burning. 
The miles that snow scoot had on it after one season was shocking. I actually started to lose weight from all the walking I did out into the lake or out into the field carrying a gas can because the scoot ran out of gas again. It was awesome. At this point, it seemed like the industry was slowly waking up to the reality that if you want this sport to continue into the future, you have to start developing little sledders now. Credit has to be given where it's due, and Polaris's introduction of the 550 Evo was a dream come true for parents all over North America. If you think Yamaha was going to let that sled go without competition though, you're dead wrong. This season, we have the perfect step up from the snow scoot with the Venom. It's going to be the next sled my oldest daughter gets on now that she's pretty much outgrown the scoot, but the Venom isn't just for young riders. It's also the perfect sled for people who don't need or want a big sled with massive power. So often we can look at sleds only from the stepping stone perspective. The Venom, however, is super fun even for adults, and having it in three different versions means an even wider range of users can benefit from its slightly smaller size, lighter weight, and more mellow power characteristics. This sled really highlights my point about Yamaha's excitement being renewed. They were back in the game with new models consumers were begging for to add to the very complete spectrum of sleds consumers already love. The Viper, for example. This was the four-stroke sled the industry had been waiting for. When it was released, it was the first time the industry had seen a four-stroke sled that performed exactly like a two-stroke sled. From power to throttle response to ride and handling, this was a performance sled that needed to make no excuses for what was under the hood. The almost cult following this sled has built since its introduction is incredible, and the number of Vipers out there with 20, 30, even 40 or 50,000 miles on them is staggering. A true testament to that legendary Yamaha reliability and durability. Of course, you can't talk about Yamaha sleds though without discussing the Sidewinder. I grew up in the days of the Indy Storm, the Mach Z, the Thundercat, and the SRX. The days when a hypersled, for the most part, rode bad, handled bad, and wasn't overly reliable, but went stupid fast when you hit the throttle. I still remember the first time I pulled the trigger on a Thundercat. It was almost a religious experience, and it was one that hadn't been duplicated until the Sidewinder. The idea that you could walk into a dealership and walk out with a factory turbocharged sled that made over 180 horsepower and could go over 120 miles an hour stock well, that was stuff dreams were made of back then. Today, it's a reality. The Sidewinder is the modern hypersled, but unlike the hypersleds of the past, this one handles well, rides great, and is Honda Civic reliable. Yamaha has a whole host of other models designed for all different purposes, from the VK540 for the utility crowd to the Venture and Transporter series for the touring crowd, and of course, the Mountain Max lineup for the high altitude guys. This brings me to an interesting development in 2021. There was a time not that long ago where it was to be understood that Yamaha was a four-stroke manufacturer only. Don't ask about two strokes because it wasn't happening. I think at the time it was a smart move to solidify the brand as the leader in four-stroke power, and they were. But as time passed, it became clear that while four-stroke power was the backbone of Yamaha's snowmobile division, there was a place for the two-stroke in specific areas of the lineup. First was the Mountain Max. Now here's something I know about riding at altitude. The days when riding in the mountains was all about high marking, those days are gone. Now this doesn't mean people don't still love the challenge of going higher than the next guy. And there are still lots of guys who love climbing the most unclimbable chutes. But mountain riding has become much more about the tight and technical than the wide open bowls. The Sidewinder MTX is still a perfectly valid and much loved sled. It packs unreal horsepower potential into a perfectly capable chassis. But for the guys who want to ride in the tight trees, it's simply too much sled and too hard to maneuver. Which is why the Mountain Max 800 makes perfect sense for Yamaha. Light is always right at altitude, and the new Mountain Max is giving Yamaha mountain riders exactly what they need to get themselves into and out of the tightest, most technical areas on the mountain. Two-stroke power made sense here. The second place a two-stroke made sense was in the transporter lineup. These sleds are designed to go anywhere and do just about anything.
From trails to the backcountry, recreational riding to getting the job done, the transporter is the right choice. And while at first glance it might seem like four-stroke power would be the best choice in a sled like this, a closer look reveals that this is the other place the two-stroke makes more sense. In the backcountry, where help is nowhere to be found, you need a sled that is easy to get unstuck and easy to work on. Four-strokes have the bulletproof reliability, but what if the battery goes flat? What if you need to change the spark plugs at minus 30 Celsius? The two-stroke transporter series have recoil backup starters. The two-stroke engines are lighter and smaller, so there's more room behind the body panels to get in and work on them. In a venture, I'm taking the four-stroke all day, but in a transporter, I want that two-stroke motor. This is a long story and I've covered a lot of topics, but the point I'm trying to make is pretty straightforward. Yamaha isn't just a four-stroke manufacturer anymore. They have a broad spectrum of motor options and perfectly complete model lineup that covers every category. They're making moves that make their dealers more profitable and their customer sleds more valuable. They're helping to protect the future of this sport by giving parents the tools they need to foster a deep passion for it in their kids. And they've done all of this while maintaining the legendary reliability and durability they have always been famous for. If you enjoyed this video, there's two things you need to do right now. Make sure you click that like button and subscribe so that you don't miss any of our new uploads. We upload content every week and we want to make sure you don't miss out on any of it.